Hi everyone, welcome to Electronics with Professor Mughal. This is a special episode because joining me tonight is my better half, my wife, Samra. How are you today? I'm good. Okay, today we are going to play Whack a Mole game onto an FPGA board. Have you played this game before? No, what's that? Okay, so Whack a Mole is one of those arcade games uh, mm -hmm. in the mall mm -hmm. uh, where they give you a piece of hammer and you have to hit the head of the mole hard and they keep popping up oh, every yeah, now yeah. and then. Yeah. You have to keep on doing fast until mm -hmm. you run out of time, right? Okay. So this is the same game, mm -hmm. uh, except for we are playing on an FPGA board. FPGA board? What's that? Well, uh, just a board game, okay? Just think of it. Okay, so if you notice over here, you got 16 LEDs, okay? okay? One of these LEDs will just randomly light up. Okay, so say for example, if this LED lights up, mm -hmm. then... The switch right below that, you have to flip that switch. That means you have whack that mole, okay, on the head. So it will keep on happening randomly and fast. Here you will have a counter mm -hmm. which will start counting downward. You have 20 seconds. Whoever whacks maximum number of moles in these 20 seconds mm -hmm. will be the winner, okay. okay? Now say if this is flipped like this, mm -hmm. And this LED lights up again, you have to flip it the other way to whack that mole. Okay. okay? So in other words, LEDs represent mole and then hammer is the switch. Okay. Okay, you flip the switch to whack the mole. Okay. All right. You wanna go first? Yes. Okay. All you need to do is to press the middle button and then your time will start then. Okay. You have to hold it for mm -hmm. a few seconds until this timer starts running. Okay. Okay, all right, your time starts now. Seven. Oh, you're going too fast. 12, 13, 14, 16, <laughs> 21, 23, 24, 27, 29. Well, you ran out of time. You ran out of time. You almost did. I think you did 31. 31? I think you did 31. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go back and, see, you know, we'll uh, slow down the speed and we'll see. Okay. All right. It's my turn now. Okay. Late here. Storybox audio. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, she had the ideal location, right? I didn't have much room to play for it, but I did horrible. I did eighteen, and you did how much? Thirty-two. You 31. did thirty-one. Okay. Well. Part of the deal was if I was gonna win, she was going to do the dishes tonight, right? And if you were going to win, you were going to the dishes tonight, right? Wait, hold on. <laughs> if I you were going to the dishes tonight? Oh, well, apparently I'll be doing dishes tonight. Well, thank you. Good job. Let's look at the block diagram here. Now, this is actually a very small project. And the reason I say that is because a lot of components of this project, we have done it before. Uh, so if you look at the video on my playlist, number eight, binary to BCD conversion, what you see in green uh, dots right here, this part of the functional block diagram is actually a copy paste from that video. I just copy paste, imported all those source files, the project files from binary to BCD conversion and paste it over here. And all I did, I'm just creating three new modules, technically two modules. Uh, one, this one for the score count, for keeping count of the number of vacs on the mole. And the second one is for the timer. So the timer starts downward, starting from 20 all the way goes to zero and it just stops there. Okay. So this part of the circuit is basically taking one second clock, which is fed into the timer count. Timer starts with 20, goes all the way 19, 18 to zero. And I'm using a five bit count output uh, uh, variable to store these values. Then I have the score count whack-a-mole game. The input to this module is the basically 16 switches. I'm using the system clock right here, which is a 100 megahertz basis three board clock. And it basically outputs 16 LEDs. It just randomly lights up the LED. 
uh, which represent moles, remember? And also it keeps record of the score count. So every time LED is light up and the right switch is flipped, the counter goes up by one that keeps record of the score count. Now the score count and this timer is then fed into the binary to BCD module, which is then fed into mods and BCD segment, seven segment, and then finally onto the seven segment display on the board. Now this part of the functional block diagram, I explain in very detail in FPGA playlist, uh, video number eight, binary to BCD conversion. And I don't want to repeat that because I want to keep the video short. Uh, but just briefly going over it, what's going to happen, I have a slow clock here, 100 hertz, and I'm using this clock to toggle the four seven segment display on the basis three board. So say uh, every 10 milliseconds, uh, I, this two bit counter, initially it's set to a value of zero, zero, which is then fed into mux. So these are the selected switches. When the counter is, uh, sorry, yeah, when the counter is zero, zero, that means whatever is over here, which is the timer once. So timer once will go past the mux, goes into the BCD segment, seven segment, right? And then you have zero, zero also fed into the decoder. Zero, zero makes a code of zero, which means this seven segment will be on and rest of the three seven segment will be off. Remember this is uh, low, active low logic and whatever the timer once is will be displayed over here. So say if the timer count right now is 18, so it will display eight over here, right? So 18 would mean this is timer once and this is timer tens and it will display eight over here. And similarly, after 10 milliseconds, the timer goes to one. So you get zero one here and you get zero one here. Then this segment is going to be on and it's going to display timer 10. That means if the counter timer count is 18, it's going to display one over here. And similarly, it's gonna do it for the score count also. So this is a very good functional block diagram. Again, you know that I always tell you, you have should have a proper understanding of how functional block diagram is working, and then it's a lot more easier to code. I hope you understand this. Let's move on to the coding part now. Okay, let's get started with the code. And I have already typed the code for the sake of the time, but I'm gonna provide you with step-by-step -step explanation. Uh, firstly, as I mentioned earlier, the source files that you see over here, which are highlighted, these are part of the FPGA project that I did several months ago. It's number eight on my FPGA playlist, binary to BCD conversion. So I'm not gonna talk too much about what exists within the source, file, source files, but I'm going to talk about the three modules that I have added to these source files. And then top module, obviously, um, I'm gonna go through it and that explains how this whack-a-mole is working. So let's get started with this module right here. This part of the code is basically for setting up a clock uh, for the timer. Uh, remember that the timer is going down starting of 20 uh, by one and it goes all the way to zero, so 2019. So this part of the code, what it's doing is basically just uh, creating a one second clock, okay? So creating a, re a register period count, setting it to an initial value of zero. When if the period count, when the clock comes in, remember this is basis three words, so we have a clock of 100 uh, megahertz here. So if the period count is not equal to 100 million basically, uh, and got minus one because it goes from zero to nine, nine, triple nine, triple nine. If that is the case, if the count is not equal to that number, then the period count should go up by one and initially setting the clock to zero. But if the period count reaches uh, 100 million minus one, then we would want the period count to reset itself back to zero, start counting again, and then clock is 
given a value of one so zero here one here so this way we have basically generated a one hertz clock which basically means one second correct let's move on to pretty simple we have done it many times before also uh, this time this module right here UTC timer count this is basically keeping record of the timer count so I got the clock from the basis three board right here I got the reset button also whenever the reset button is pressed it basically resets the timer and I have the output which is basically the count and because the timer count starts from 20 I need five bits so therefore I have an array of five bits right there for the count and remember because this needs to go down every one second so I am basically taking a wire uh, clock out this is a one second clock and then instantiating the timer clock right here which is this that I just went through okay so from here we get our one second clock which we have declared as a wire and initially because the timer is going to be 20 seconds that's how we want it to be so we are declaring a register which is the current count and setting it to a value of 20. Now whenever the positive edge of the clock arrives there are different scenarios that could happen. If the reset button is pressed that we would want the current count to set to 20 because that's how we want the timer to be. You want it to start from 20 and go all the way to zero every second so it's like it's a countdown else if if current count is zero that means when the current goes all the way from 20 to zero then the current counts get current count that means it basically stays zero okay else if then this is this is the part that's actually working um, uh, the, uh, the most logical part among the three situations scenarios else if the current count is greater than or equal to one that means if when if it's not zero it has to go down by one so if it's 10 it's supposed to go down by one nine eight seven six five so on until it gets to zero once it's zero it basically stays zero else it's this this is sort of like a default situation else current count equals to current count so this is basically going from 20 to zero that's what the timer count is and finally we want the our, our output count uh, assigning a value whatever is the current count that we initially declared as a register right here okay so pretty simple very basic let's move on to whack-a-mole game this is basically a whack-a-mole game in other words this is also a score count module okay so anytime when the right switch is flipped that corresponds to the right LED that is light up score count needs to go up so the input to that and I can also we can look at the block diagram here if you look at the whack-a-mole game the input to that is clock switches and reset so we got the clock that's the basis 300 megahertz clock we have the 16 switches on the board and then we have the reset let's look at the output the output to that is the six bit score count because it can go up to 32 maximum remember you got 16 switches and you can flip it flip those switches either way so 16 times 2 is 32 so you need 6 bits and you got 16 LEDs so LEDs and score count uh, both declared as register maximum score count could be 32 remember you got 20 seconds then we use the command local parameter and assign uh, basically declaring a constant for each state uh, for a maximum score count of 32 and what it does basically you know you got these uh, six bits right there and then s triple zero triple zero is basically zoo, uh, z uh, zero excuse me uh, similarly s triple zero one zero that makes a code of four and it goes all the way to 32 and we know that s one double zero triple zero is equivalent to 32 in decimal so all right now we are going to create two diff two registers one is going to be the current state obviously the score count initially is going to be set to zero and next state also initially we are setting it to zero but because we have to keep count of the score we have to declare both of these as registers 
Okay, by default, whenever the positive edge of the clock arrives and if the reset, by default, obviously we would want the current state to be zero and therefore we are basically using this constant. Remember, this is equivalent to zero. Else current state gets the next state. Okay, all right, now we then move on to, we, now that we have taken care of the reset button, which is the center button of the basis three board, we are now going to move on to the next state combinational logic, okay? And remember, our next state is dependent upon uh, the, um, the current state, whatever the current state is, and the switch in, switches. If the right switch is flipped, then the counter should go up by one. And obviously this is all is within the body of the clock. Okay, we are going to use a case statement. We are looking at the current state. Remember we declared this as a register above, as a six bit register. If the initial, if the first case that we have, when uh, the current state is zero basically, begin. So next state gets to zero so it should stay zero and also all leds on the board will be off score count will be zero therefore you're setting all the bits to zero and then within that we are creating a scenario and this is where randomizing comes in so we are randomly lighting up led now it is up to you whichever led you would want to light up for here on line number 113 I am lighting up LED 1. Now, if you want to change it to 2, that is absolutely fine. You can do that. Okay. Now, I am going with this sequence. LED 1 gets to 1. That means now the user has to flip switch 1 in order to whack the mole. So, we are looking at this condition now. If switch 1 is high, then the score count, which means the next state should go to 1. So, therefore, you have S00. 0001 then the score count goes to 1 and the next state is and the next state is next state gets to yeah else next state is s00000 mean if switch 1 is not high because the led was high so it was the switch 1 that was supposed to be high if that's not the case then the next state or the score count should remain zero okay all right let's move to another case if the score count is one if the score count is one that means we need to display one on the basis three board so score count gets six triple zero double zero one all leds will be zero for a very tiny amount of time and then we are now lighting up led 11 again this is up to you if you want to light up led 9 you can also do that i'm just going to stick with what i have this is all random okay user would not know it so led 11 is we are setting up led 11 on and if switch 11 is pressed the next state the score count because previously the score count was one now it should go to one plus one two so therefore you have s triple one zero one zero and if that's not the case if the switch 11 is not pressed then the state should remain to s triple zero zero one which is one that means the score count should remain one because the user hit the wrong button i'll cover one, one more case and then i will skip to the very end because this is all repetition this is all same if the score count is two if the score count is two then we want to display two on the basis three board therefore the score count is set to six complement b triple zero zero one zero that makes a code of two in decimal we're keeping the all the led zero initially then led two goes one goes to one led two is going to be on and therefore the user need to hit switch 2 and if that's the case if the flip if the switch 2 is flipped that means the score count which was 2 it should go to 3 it should go to 3 s triple one zero one one makes a code of 3 in decimal right and then if that's not the case then this next state should remain to 2 which was this right here right I hope you guys are following me and all the other stuff is basically copy paste and then you all you need to do is change this part everything else remains same so I'm gonna go all the way to the very bottom uh, so say 
31 31 remember the maximum score you can get is 32 let's look at this part of the code so it looks like the state is s0 double one double one one score count is 31 31 switches have been flipped so initially all leds will be zero and this time around led three will be on and if the user hits switch number three that means the next state will be 32 s1 triple zero 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 makes a code this is actually going to be one right here uh, or I can just just like I had in the previous I can just have like this and I can save it and then if that's the case then the next state should be 32 uh, and if not if that's not the case if switch 3 is not flipped then it should remain the count score count should remain 31 score count should remain 31 okay and similarly if the score count is 32 the next state is going to be 32 score count is going to be 32 and then the, all the LEDs will be zero because the game is over you cannot exceed uh, 32 that's how I have set it up you can change it if you like you can just keep on going but I think getting 22 switches flipped over in a matter of 20 seconds that's gonna be a tough task and follow it by the default and uh, make sure you got all the N N cases followed by the N module. Very simple logic. Now let's move on to top module. Now top module is basically nothing but instant instantiating all the um, uh, what do you call it? All the modules that we have made. And before I work on top module, I want to go back to uh, block diagram because this is gonna be. Uh, I'm, I want to switch back and forth. Uh, between this window and the block diagram so let's start with the inputs what input do we have for this whack-a-mole game well we got reset as an input you got clock as an input we got 16 switches as an input so it looks like we got three inputs we have three inputs line 45 46 47 this clock is the 100 megahertz clock these are the 16 switches on the basis 3 board we got the reset button every time center button is pressed the reset the score count and the timer count is they would reset itself let's look at the output the out one of the output is the 16 led that are basically representing moles in this game we also have the seven segments and we have the four enablers to enable four seven segment display on the basis three board so we got three outputs right here line 48 49 50 we also have a lot of wires you what you see over here line 53 all the way to 59 these are all wires now how to identify wire on block diagram well any output that connects to the input of the following module is considered as a wire so where, where you see my cursor the one second clock right here is referred to the clock out that's a wire it's because it's fed into timer count module Similarly, the timer count output, which is this uh, this count here, is considered as a wire because it's fed into binary to BCD. Similarly, the whack-a-mole whack game, the output is score count, which is a 6-bit. That's fed into binary to BCD modules. It's a wire again. Similarly, you got four wires here. You got one wire here. You got one wire here. You got one wire here. I, I say one wire but basically it's got more than one right because it's an error and you got wires going into the mux and also the decoder okay so we're gonna follow along let's go back here Le let's look at 53 line number 53 wire clock out this is the hundred hertz slow clock for toggling seven segment this is this wire this is this wire which is going into two bit counter wire clock out all right, let's move to the next one, line number 54, timer clock out. This is a one second timer clock for the countdown, 2019, 18. This is this wire right here, timer clock out, okay, which is going into the timer count. Next is the mux out. Well, this is this wire right here. The output of the mux is going to be a four bit array, which is fed into BCD to seven segment. All right, what is next? We have a two bit counter. This is a two bit counter initially, which is set to zero. That's this output of two bit counter, which is fed into marks and also 
decoder and this the purpose of this counter is to make sure to enable these seven segment display one by one every 10 milliseconds let's move on to line number 57 okay that is your score count and your timer count remember here we are displaying our timer and these two seven segments on the very right they are going to display the score count so you have the timer once timer tens score ones and score tens these are fed into the mux so they are they are declared as wire and because those are four bit so that's how we have declared it as a wire as an array now we have the score count and the timer count which is basically the output of the timer count which is fed into binary to bcd and the output of whack-a-mole game which is a six bit score count again those two are becoming the input of a following module so we have to declare them as wire and that's what they are so the maximum score you can get is 32 here on the score count so you got six bit that provides you with the range of 0 to 63 enough to cover 32 range and then again timer 5 bits 0 to 31 enough to cover 20 second range okay all right following that i have these all these modules instantiated again i don't want to go into uh because i have already covered in my previous video right here but i do want to talk about these three modules that we just created i want to start up with the timer clock Remember this timer clock is setting a one second clock and if you look at the input and output I basically have clock input and the clock output and I'm going to follow the sequence over here in the top module. I should have clock in. I should have the clock in which is basically this system clock. That's how I have uh, referred to it as system clock clock and the clock out which we refer to as timer clock out right so timer clock out all right so everything is covered here i'm gonna then move on i'm gonna move on to timer count it's very important that you go back here timer count and follow the sequence i got input clock here then reset and then the count timer count okay so i have to follow the sequence clock reset count so i have the clock here i have the clock here the system clock the reset here and the timer count that's how I instantiating uh, these modules I have to make sure that this module name exactly matches how it appears over here okay and these are the identifiers right here they cannot be same they for every module that you instantiate it has to be different lastly I have this whack-a-mole game which is right here and again I'm gonna follow the sequence here clock switches reset LED and score count so if you notice over here, I'm following the same sequence, clock switches reset, LED, and score count. So every time it runs this module, it basically runs everything all at once, and that completes the game. With this, I am pretty much done with my all my sources files. Now let's look at the constant file. Again, I have already copy pasted everything. All I need is a clock right here. This is a system clock 100 megahertz I got 16 switches I'm using all switches on the boards I'm also using all L16 LEDs on the board we need seven segments this is all just copy paste from the constraint file I'll leave the link in the description and also for this project I'll leave the link in the description you got four enables to turn on the seven segments and one center button one center button is responsible for resetting the whole game and i'm gonna quickly go to the implementation and then generate a bitstream file upload it onto the fpga board and you know what happens then right awesome implementation is now complete let's generate a bitstream file it should take another minute or so just be patient Great, fantastic. Next step is to implement your digital circuit design onto an FPGA board. But before you can do that, you have to connect your basis 3 board with your laptop, make a connection, and upload your bit file to the board and all set. There you go, all set. Your board should be up and running by now. And I hope you enjoy this whack-a-mole game.
If you have any question regarding this project, feel free to post any comments or questions you may have in the description below. Also, you'll find access to project files in the description. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. I kept it very short. I wanted to go through the code line by line also. Feel free to try it and see if you can actually modify it. I would love to have you add some more features to it. For example, when the time is over, the LED starts scrolling. If you remember, one of my video on my FPGA playlist is about scrolling LEDs. And you can put that part, add an extra feature to this project. Whenever the time counter goes to zero, the LED should start scrolling, meaning the time is over or the game is over. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share this video with your fellow, fellow colleagues, and don't forget to visit the website and sign up to the newsletter. Till next time, enjoy your rest of the day and stay safe. Bye.